Good morning. Good morning, Brother Terrence. Hallelujah. It's your name this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We have about three minutes. Just worship the Lord. Good morning, Brother Dwayne. Hallelujah. We will be in Acts 28. They say, but shake it off. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. You're worthy to be praised this morning. God, we thank you for another opportunity, God. Good morning, Sister Boxley. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Brother Jeffrey. Good morning, Tawana. Good morning. I pray this is a word that blesses you this morning. Hallelujah. No debate. We recognize, God, you're here, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. We thank you, God, for another day to worship you, to serve you, to acknowledge you as our Lord and Savior, to recognize, God, that we're nothing without you. We're everything because of you, God. Hallelujah. We can do nothing. Without you, God, because of you, everything is possible, God. With you, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord our God this morning. He alone is worthy to be praised. There's none like him in all the earth. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb. Good morning, Sister Yvette. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name this morning. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for this fourth watch, God. We thank you for those who are up watching, praying, waiting, anticipating, God, you, a word from you, God. God, I pray that this word lands upon good ground. Prepare the harvest. Hallelujah. Prepare their hearts to receive the harvest of this word. Bless your name this morning. God, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, for things we've said, things we've done, God, things we've thought that were unlike you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to plead our case. Hallelujah. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to serve you. God, to be called children of the Most High God. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Father, that we have life, we have breath, God, in our lungs, God, to praise you, to worship you, to lift up our hands, oh God. Because as we learned last week, when we lift up our hands, things happen, God. Things are shifted, God. Hallelujah, God. Outcomes are uh, become our, our income. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things turn in our favor, God, with lifted hands. So, God, we thank you this morning. We bless your name this morning. There's none like you, Lord. Thank you for your word, for your word is life, God. You are the word, Jesus. And we thank you that your word came and dwelled among us. So, Daddy, we bless your name this morning, and we love you, sweet, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that your Mother's Day celebration, uh, for those of you uh, who were blessed to spend time with your mommies, or if your mommy has gone on to glory, we pray that it was still a day of love and of uh, thanksgiving and of uh, praise and good memories and good feelings. Amen. Uh, and I just pray uh, for those who are in, in um, transition uh, of their mommies. God, you will see her again. Amen. She is in Christ and certainly you are in Christ and we thank you for that opportunity to be with our mothers again. Amen. Good morning, Sister Tracy. Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. This is the story that uh, many of us have heard about Paul who uh, is shipwrecked and he is on the boat and uh, in chapter 27 of Acts and then um, the, the boat goes ashore. The ship uh, uh, makes its way safely to shore. And in making it safely to shore, um, the people uh, who are on the island, they are so um, excited uh, 
of, of this boat coming and landing there safely and miraculously in this storm that they build a fire for uh, Paul. And in building that fire, we know this story about when Paul goes to um, take and put wood on the fire, that a snake comes out. A snake comes out. Now, we know that biblically, and even today, don't nobody like snakes, and uh, snakes were a sign of curse, that you were cursed. So let's just go ahead and pick this text up right in verse 1. Amen. And the scripture says, I'm reading from two versions of the God, God's Word version and the Amplified. And it says it this way. After they had made it safely to land, that um, to this land, this, this island called Malta. Okay, so they had made it safely to Malta. And it says that um, the natives there um, were very kind and hospitable. This was just their nature. Now, let me tell you, Malta... Actually, uh, it's, it's God is so amazing. Malta actually means lost. That's what it means. It's, it's the, the island by definition. That word Malta means lost, not, not where we go and get. Do they still make malts? But anyway, uh, Malta, that word means lost. So this island uh, where Paul, they were lost in this storm, but they landed safely at Malta. And these people were very kind. They were just very kind and hospitable people. You would almost think that that is the name that the island represented, but it didn't. That's not what the name meant. The name meant lost. You ever been in a storm, beloved? You know that saying people say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I'm telling you this morning, stop saying that. Stop saying if it ain't one thing, it's another, because that's why the other always comes, because you didn't say it. You didn't prophesy it over your own life. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Hi, that's my sissy, Brenda. So stop saying if it ain't one thing, it's another. Because you, out of your mouth, have declared that. So that's why if it ain't one thing, it's another. Because you keep saying it. So stop saying that. And so, but here Paul is. He's just come out of a storm. He's just come out of a storm. And now he's landed on an island by definition means lost. You've come out of a job situation. You 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 lost your job, your relationship, you got a diagnosis from the doctor, you're waiting on a call from a doctor, your kids are acting crazy, something's going on in your relationship. All of these things are happening, but you're coming out of it. You're coming out of it, and it seems as if you've landed safely. But now your question is, what do I do? I've come out of this divorce, but what do I do as a single woman or man? Okay, so I've lost that job, but here's another job opportunity. But I don't know how to do this job, but God opened up this door. Now the Lord is telling me to move here or to move there. But what do I do? I, I have a vision for a business, for I have a dream, an idea. But what do I do? So you, God drops this idea in your spirit. Something's been prophesied over you, but you're saying, what do I do? I feel lost. So that's where Paul was. I love Paul. Paul wrote, wrote 13 books of the New Testament. Let me tell y'all, I love him. Because it ain't too much that you can't run up on, hallelujah, that Paul didn't wrote that won't give you some help. Glory to God. Bless your name. So here he is. He's landed on the island of Malta. And the Bible says that these natives show him extraordinary kindness. Show him and the others who get off the ship this extraordinary kindness. And so they start this fire for them. You know, you got to imagine that they're wet. They were in a storm. Their boat tossed to and fro. And so now they've landed. And so, bless their hearts, the people of Malta build them a fire. Because now, not only have they uh, landed safely, but it's raining and it's cold. If it ain't one thing, it's another, right? That's what people say. So here they are. They've, they've landed, and, and it's cold, okay? So you you came out of that situation, but you landed, and now there's a big bill that's come in the mail. You've landed, and now your car is acting up. You got the job, but now your car is acting up. So it's cold, and it's raining. Hallelujah. 
So you, you got out of that relationship and now here comes somebody else and you waited. Hey, Kim. And you waited. You waited. And now you get into something and you think this is it. This is right. And here you are three months in and he acting like a booger man and she acting like she crazy and from Mars. So you're like, okay, it's cold and it's raining. I came out of that and now I'm in this. And so there's this fire. God sends warmth. He sends good news. Amen. He sends something that you can breathe. You can, you can take a rest. And so the Bible says, but, um, uh, but when Paul gathered, now this is where I kind of get suspicious about this, this scripture because I start to question the scripture. The people built you the fire. They, they were hospitable. They were kind. They built you the fire. They wanted to do this for you. But here go Paul, bless his heart, getting up and going to gather twigs. You don't know nothing about this island. I know you clearly know how to build a fire, duh. But you don't know nothing about the island of Malta. You lost in a place you're unfamiliar with, in a land you're unfamiliar with, but you decide to go get up and get some twigs. I'm talking to somebody right now. God did not tell you to do that. Sit down. I will make you lie down in green pastures. He didn't tell you to go gather nothing. He didn't tell you to go do that. He said, rest. He said, be still. Let somebody else take care of you. I have a dear friend, I ain't going to say her name, she know who I'm talking about, if she hear this, she's just not used to letting people help her. She's not used to it. She just had major surgery, and I was at the hospital with her, and her husband is so attentive. I mean, to the point he put in the straw in the cup, he put in the straw, the straw to her mouth, and she's like, honey, I got it. But she moving her hand like this, like Frankenstein. <laughs> Gotta move it. <laughs> And her husband is just trying to help her. You are in the bed at the hospital with a brace around your neck. Let that man help you. Oh, but honey, she has been celebrating him since she got home, talking about how great and awesome this man is. Because sometimes you just have to learn to let somebody, everybody say it with me, help you. So here's Paul in this text. He then went and got up and decided to go get his own twigs. To put them in the fire. So the Bible says he gathers a bundle of sticks. Just picks up a bundle of sticks. And he gathers them. And he places them on the fire. And he places them on the fire. And all of a sudden a viper, a snake, jumps out and crawls out because it's hot. That snake don't want to be in there with that heat. And he crawls out of there and latches on to Paul's hand. We've all heard the story. We've all heard the story. But the part we focus on in this text is often where Paul shakes it off. So this is where I tell you, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Now, you probably wouldn't have had that snake grab your hand had you let the people go get the twigs. Because the people probably knew, because see, they had already built the fire. So maybe they already had wood set aside where there were no snakes in that wood. What I'm here to encourage you this morning, when you are in an unfamiliar land, let somebody who's familiar with the land, with the situation, because they've been there before, let them help you. I think I just said something. Let them help you. They're familiar with what's going on. They've been there before. They've walked that way before. Take their wise counsel. Maybe they haven't walked that way before, but God has given them something in the way of wisdom. And the reason you got yourself wrapped up in something and you and, and something's wrapped up all in you and this thing has come up on you is because maybe you didn't listen to wise counsel. Maybe, maybe. I certainly have been there that I didn't listen to wise counsel. And so here you are. You're in this situation. Because you decided to get up from where God told you to sit down and receive. You, you, you've just come through something traumatic. But you just continuing to press on. Now, I am one of those people that believe, keep it moving. 
You ain't got to wallow in it. You ain't got to sit around and be depressed. But if there's a season of healing, if there's a season of receiving, you, you, should, you should receive. You should allow God, if he set those environments and those seasons up, whether it's three days, a week, two weeks, whatever it is you need to take it. I can't tell you how long that season is. You don't want to look up and everything is past you because God has also told you now it's time. Joshua, you've mourned long enough. Move on. You have to be sensitive to the voice of God. So here we are in the text. We're back at it. And in verse 3, that viper crawls up on Paul's arm. And the Bible says, when the natives saw that this creature, this snake, had latched itself on to Paul, they started to talk. Well, here we go. Somebody saw Paul getting up to go get those twigs. Somebody should have said, man of God, brother, let me get those because we're familiar with that. Sis, that's not the one for you. You, you, need to, you need to leave him alone. Now listen, sometimes people tell us these things and we still go ahead and do what we want to do. They sit back and they watch it knowing, knowing, they know, they know. Let me take my glasses off. Knowing that that person is not the one. Knowing. Now, I can talk about this because I've been in that situation. And sometimes because you you haven't heard God say it to you, you haven't heard God say, don't take that job. You haven't heard God say, don't move there. You haven't God heard God say, don't be in a relationship with that person. You haven't heard God say, don't go buy that car because you know you can't afford it. You didn't hear God say, don't buy that house uh, because the tax is going to kick your tail and the electric bill and the, the uh, <laughs> glory to God, all of that. The homeowners association, you didn't factor all of that in. So you didn't hear, but maybe someone tried to tell you. And I understand seeking God for yourself because I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm one of them people. I'm like, okay, let me hear what the Lord has to say. Um, I certainly uh, was in a situation where um, I had people say, be cautious, or some, I'm feeling some about him. And the whole time I dated him, I'm like, okay, God, show me. I, I need for you to show me. What is it that I need to see? You need to watch. And while you're watching, you need to listen. You need to listen while you watch and watch while you listen. And so here are the people in Acts chapter 28, the natives, in a lost place. Though you hospitable and you real kind to Paul to help him by building that fire, here they go, running their mouth. You all excited that Paul didn't land it. And you being real kind to him, all them people who, who encouraging you and, and Hosanna, Hosanna, and minutes later, crucify him, crucify him. So here go the people, here go the people, here go the people. When the natives saw that the snake, the snake, the one that ain't meant for you, right? That, that this thing that has latched itself to you, when they saw that the disease had come up on you, when, when uh, here go this thing that's attached itself to you, they started talking. And this is what they started saying. Undoubtedly, this man is a murderer. How you jump? How you tell me? How did you jump from a snake? From something latching itself to you, you didn't, you didn't ask for it to latch itself to you. Now the people, they say, they say, must be a murderer. She must have did that. What did she say for him to slap her and beat her up? What, what, did, what, what, did, what did he do uh, for the police well, to pull him over? You know what? I'm, I'm so sick of when I read stuff about... Crimes against black men that we say stuff that no, we don't say that people in social media who are not as sensitive to the plights that go on in the African-American community will say things like, well, he must have did something for the police just to shoot up his back window and kill him. Well, well what did he do? Did he reach for a gun? But wasn't no gun in the car. Good God almighty. Well, what did he do that they shot him in the back while he was running away? What did he do while he was sitting on a swing, what, 11 years old? 
with a play gun. Well, maybe uh, they thought it was a real gun. They can think it's a real gun all day long, but it wasn't. And now he's dead. They say. They are always talking. You need to learn how to shut the they sayers down. All through this, this beginning of this text, they say, no doubtedly, he's a murderer. What did he do? Did he escape from jail? <laughs> Was he a prisoner on that ship that docked on our island, this place of lost? Is he, but now remind you, let's be clear, the scripture says when they they built Paul a fire, but all of them got around the fire. So you think that if Paul was a prisoner, all these people would be sitting around the fire with you? Wouldn't they like try to get him and, and put him in some shackles or something? But they start talking. People are always talking. You cannot let yourself get caught up with the people that are talking. She left him because he was this. Sometimes people leave just because they want to leave. He did, th and maybe he did do this, and maybe he did do that, and maybe she did do this, and maybe she did do that. But sometimes people just talk just because they ain't got nothing else better to do. And prayerfully, none of us are the ones talking. The truth is, the truth is, we all have been guilty of being the they sayers. So here are the they sayers in this scripture running their mouth about Paul. He must have been a murderer. This was before Paul shook it off his hand. So, so imagine this thing attached to Paul. He didn't put the fire down, and here comes the snake up out of the, up out of the fire. Oh, honey, when it gets hot, everything comes up out the fire. Our attitudes, our past, people from our past, memories. From, when it gets hot, honey, when the fire gets on, all kind of stuff come up out the fire. All kind of stuff come up out when it gets hot. On your job. You got the rumor that the company is going to close and it's hot. And now you got sabotagers because somebody's trying to keep their job, but they want you to lose your job. It gets hot. It gets hot. When, when there's a disagreement in your marriage and that brother is saying, I thought we talked about that like six weeks ago. Why are you bringing that up? But it's hot because it wasn't resolved. It was still something underneath, underneath the kindles that now something's been touched again, something from your past, something that you thought was resolved. But now the heat has brought that thing back up. Oh, yeah, stuff come out when it gets hot. Stuff comes out. When it gets hot. And so you got to be mindful to, to, to test the temperatures of your life. To test the temperatures of your season. To test the temperatures of your relationship. Be careful about what you let come out. What you let come up and come out when it's a heated situation. Because like that snake that came up out of the water. Good God Almighty. Like that snake that came up out of the water, up out of the the fire with Paul, and la and attached itself to Paul. When we say things because it's a heated situation, those words latch, and it's hard to take a word back once it's been released, and it's come through our ear gates and it's landed upon our hearts and our souls. It's hard to erase words. It's hard to erase them. So be careful about what you allow to come up out of the heat when there's a heated situation. So here's Paul and they're talking. They're talking. Now while they're talking, Paul is looking at a snake that's attached itself to his hand. Oh my God. I'll probably be like, ah! me oh i hate don't i don't know who likes snakes y'all might like snakes i saw a picture on instagram that uh my niece had was holding a snake but she loved animals i'm like girl Brittany, boo girl go put that snake down <laughs> glory to god snakes ain't your friend so here we go so um so paul shakes that creature off he shakes it off into the fire and the bible says that paul suffers no ill Snake don't bite him. 
Snake been shook, shook off. Now, I'm thinking that when he shook it, it probably, whether it fell back into the fire or, or uh, because he says that the Bible says that Paul shakes it back off into the fire. So he shook it off back into the place where it came from. So I'm going to give y'all a little tool right now. If you know you said something, you know you've done something, you need to send that thing back to hell where it came from. You need to send it back. Lord, I take that back. I'm going to stop saying, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I take that back. I, I don't want that no more. I return that to where it came. Uh-uh. I ain't going to stop saying. I'm going to stop saying, Lord, I'm broke. I'm going to stop saying that. <laughs> Good God Almighty, I give that back to the hell to where it came from. I ain't never got no money. I ain't going to never find a man. Ain't no good men out here. Ain't no good women out here. Take that back. Take that back. Take that back. There is, there is someone for me. Hallelujah. It's a good man for me. It's a good woman for me. Wealth is mine. Opportunity is mine. Hallelujah. I got good credit. I declare I got a $700, $800 credit score. You got to take back. My credit is horrible. Take that stuff back. Shake that stuff off and take it back. Take back your victory. Take back your control. Good God Almighty. Don't let that thing stay wrapped around you forever. Don't let that thing pull you into the fire and take you into the sunken place. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. So the Bible says, so that's what Paul does. Paul shakes it off and shakes it back into the place that it came from. Now, we know the nature of that snake is probably he slithered his tail up out that fire. He slithered his tail up out that fire and went on out of that fire and went somewhere else. Now, here go the people again. Here they go talking. Here they go talking. And after, so the people stood back. Here they go. They stood back and they start talking again and watching, waiting to see. Is he going to swell up? See, all them people who wait in the sea, that you're going you gonna to stay stuck. They're they going to see that if the bite of, of that man leaving you with your kids and divorcing you and go, going to hook up with that woman down the street and, and in your marriage that committed adultery, hallelujah, and now he didn't went and started a relationship somewhere else. They waiting to see. They waiting to see that now that that woman then left you as a single father or or maybe you had a situation where you had a spouse transition in life on you. They're waiting to see. Now, let me see. Let me see if he going to bring another woman into that house already because, you know, talking, running their mouth. They waiting to see. Oh, they didn't lost their job. Uh huh. Let's see if that that Mercedes go back. Hallelujah. Let me see if that Land Rover got to go back or that BMW. Yeah, they're going to lose that house. They waiting to see. They looking back. They expecting you to fail. They expecting your demise. Oh, let's see. They didn't got out of jail. They ain't going to get no job. Nah, that's why they went to jail. Because it was cursed. Because it was something they did. Sometimes it ain't something they did. I got a good friend who went to jail and he didn't do nothing. I know he, we all know he didn't do nothing. It was because he, who he was associated with. Let's see. Let's see what happens now. Uh-huh. She was all cute, uh, all coming up. Now look at her. She, she done blown up because that man mistreated her. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, they done lost all their church members. Folk done went somewhere else. Let's see. They're going to have to church, close their church. People waiting. They standing back trying to see what's going to happen. So the Bible says that here they are waiting on Paul, Acts 28. Is he going to swell up? They waiting because they believe the snake then bit him because certainly if it wrapped itself around him, it had to bite him. Certainly if you got hooked up in that situation, oh, there's some negativity that's still there. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. I have a friend girl. She said to me one time, she said... Uh, uh, Mr. Tate, you got you got a serious comeback. You you got a bounce back that I ain't never seen. 
that, you know, you didn't gave a car back after an engagement. You didn't took your house, name off the house. The, the man then went in less than a year and married somebody else. You gave the ring back. Uh, hallelujah. You did all. You got some serious bounce back. Uh, two years later, you meet another man. He 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 tripping too. Hallelujah. He was a liar. Good God on my <laughs> Lord have mercy. And all of that. And they're like, how do you do that? How do you just bounce back from stuff like that? You know what I told them? I pray. I pray and I shake it off. And I realize that God had a reason. God allowed me to come into those relationships, but he didn't allow me to stay. And this is what I tell people all the time. I don't care what your situation is. You keep praying. God, show me. If I'm not supposed to be in this, I took a little vacay. My Sands is on here, uh, Monica. Hey, Sands. I took a little vacay. Hey, Kesia. I took a little vacay. Hey, Antoine. I took a little vacay. Went away for two weeks. Prayed. Sought God. I was in the word. Lord, show me. What did I miss? Did I miss something? Did you allow this? Examined myself. What? What? So, so you must. You must. When things have attached itself to you, see, this is where soul ties. One day I'm going to talk about soul ties. This is why breaking yourself from soul ties are critical before you go into another relationship. Before you allow yourself to be attached to something else. Because you take those soul ties into the next relationship. And you keep, the Bible says, the Bible says in Matthew that when you have put out the enemy, when you have made, set your house clean, when you have been delivered, when you have shook it off, when you have been set free, the Bible says that the enemy goes. Yes, he does. Hey, Kimberly. And he goes. And he goes searching about for another home. Well, the truth is he wants to return to the home that he was put out of, that, that he was, that was, that dis disconnected itself from him. And the Bible says that he comes back to your house, that you put him out. You put out those negative thoughts. You put out that sin. You put out that struggle. You've been delivered. You said, I'm going to live differently. I'm going to do better. Lord, help me. So you've, you've disconnected yourself. You've been delivered. You've been set free and you're on your way to wholeness. And the Bible says that the devil comes back to your house. And he sees that it's clean, but it's not filled. You ain't put no word in it. You ain't start going to church. You ain't serving. You're not trying to be obedient. You're just glad to be free. Hallelujah. I hurt my shoulder on Friday, so it's hard to lift my hard to lift this hand, but arm. But he says, the Bible says that that they come back, and when he sees that your house isn't filled, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's empty. It's pretty. And he sees that no other devil that moved in. <laughs> The Bible says he goes back and he gets seven more. And you are worse off than you were before he left. We're going to teach that one day too. How to keep your house clean. So when you have disconnected yourself, when you have shook it off, when you are free, you got to shut the naysayers down. Oh, she gonna, he going to go back to drugs. I don't know. I know. Yeah, they've been clean for 90 days, but they're going to go back. Yeah, they supposedly they stopped drinking. They stopped smoking. They stopped having sex. They didn't cut him off. They ain't in that adulterous relationship no more. Running their mouth. But they're going to go back. They're going to go back. Uh-huh. You, you have the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that God gives you the power. God gives you the power. To put everything that is in disobedience into obedience. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But everything, God will give you the power. You, me and you the power to condemn it. So Paul had the power to condemn whatever these people were saying about the, him while they were standing back watching and running their mouth. They saying, but you got to learn how to shake it off. They saying, but you got to learn how to shake it off. 
He says, he said he shook them off and they stood back watching. But after they had waited a long time, I wonder how long they waited. How long did they wait to see if Paul was going to swell up? <laughs> how long did they wait? The Bible says they waited a long time. How long did they wait? An hour? Two hours? Three hours? Just waiting to see if they was going to fail. If They're waiting to see if you're going to fail. You got that job. You got that increase. You now their manager. They want to see if you fail. I should have got that job. They want to see because you met that person and you and that, that brother, you and that sister heard God and, and now you married and, and it was only six months. It was only nine months. It was only a year. God did a quick work and a complete work and it's good. But they, they wanted to fail. Why they always, everything, everything just seemed to come so easy. They want your business to fail. They want your ministry to fail. They're looking back. They're watching to see. What's going to happen? Oh, you have the power to condemn the naysayers just by keeping it moving, keeping doing, keep doing what God has told you to do. Keeping your hand to the plow. Keep moving forward. When he tells you to take a break, you take a break. When he tells you to sit down and receive, you sit down and receive. Good morning, Richard. Whatever it is the Lord has told you to do, that's what you do. Shake it off and keep moving. I know it's crazy. Some of you stayed in marriages and everybody was telling you, you need to leave him. You need to leave her. Now, listen, I'm the first one to say, don't you stay in none when you get your tail beat. You get to safety. But maybe God ain't told you to divorce him, but he told you to get to safety. Sometimes that's me and maybe God ain't tell you to divorce her. But but hear me, God ain't calling for no more. Uh, hose, hose, who is it? Gomer and... Was it Jose? Is that right? God ain't asking for that no more. I just don't believe God's telling nobody to get it in a marriage to be abused. I just don't believe because it ain't your job to save nobody. That's Jesus' job. <laughs> That's the word in the Holy Spirit. Good God Almighty. So after they had waited a long time, the Bible says they saw nothing unusual. Good morning, Brother Matthew. They saw nothing unusual. And so they changed their minds. And now they began to say, Paul must be a god. First, Paul was a murderer. First, Paul was an escaped criminal. First, Paul must have did something wrong. You must have did something wrong. You was this, you was that. But now they're seeing you prosper. Now they're seeing you blow up. Now they're seeing it happen. First, they was telling you you're doing too much. You need to go sit down. Stay in your lane. But God told you to do this and God told you to do that and God told you to start this and God told you to start that and God told you to step out on faith and do this and do that. God told you to put that down and pick that up and God told you to wait. God told you to be still because you're listening to do what God told you to do. And now they're seeing it happen. They're seeing you go from glory to glory and faith to faith. And now they're saying, oh, God must be with her. In this case, they're saying, Paul must be a god. Because look at all this good stuff that's happening to them. So now it, when it wasn't a snake that's latching to them, now it's a person that's trying to latch to you. Be careful about people who want to praise you one minute, Hosanna, Hosanna, and the next minute, crucify him, crucify him. In this case, it was crucify him, crucify him, and now it's Hosanna, Hosanna. But they'll go back. To crucify him, crucify him. Just give him time. Just give him time. Because if they didn't come with the right intentions. Remember, the Bible says that they were very hospitable and kind to Paul. So why you flip on me? You flipped on me because you saw something in me that you hadn't seen before. And one act. Not. Get, I don't even get another chance to get it together. To get it right. No, you don't. get. No, hear me. You don't get to punch me. And I give you another chance. Because I'm leaving the first time you hit me. Now you need to go get some counsel. I may not divorce you. I may not even end the relationship. I may give you time to get it right. <laughs> exactly. I may give it time for you to get it right. But you better go get some help. And if I don't see no change, peace two fingers. 
Marriage, you might have to wait for God to release you. But these courting and dating situations and y'all letting people raise their hand at you and continue to cheat on you, continue to abuse you verbally, financially, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. You ain't married to them. You better go somewhere. Bye, Felicia or Frank, whatever your name is. Peace, two fingers. Go get some help. You get some help, we can talk about it. But if you don't, I'm not standing that. I keep telling people, you don't marry Manic. <laughs> you don't marry Manic. Mm -mm. I digress. Back to the scripture. So the Bible says, the Bible says here, that all of this, they were talking. They, they showed him kindness. They saw an abnormal thing happen in his life. Something he didn't ask for. Something he probably walked into. Then they started talking. When Paul or God proved them wrong, they started talking again. It is necessary in your life, beloved, that you learn how to shut down the naysayers. You have to learn how to shut down the naysayers. You have to learn how to shake it off. Uh, you know, I was watching, um, I, somehow, I, don't even, I told my sister, I don't even know how the TV got to, um, I don't even know what channel it was on, um, Basketball Wives. Lord have mercy. Beautiful women. Beautiful. Not one of them ain't beaut, ain't attractive, not one. But these are the most fightingest, cussingest women. Some of them are basketball players, wives. Some of them are girlfriends. Good God Almighty. The first thing when somebody says something, they ready to fight. They wearing their tennis shoes. They ain't got no earrings on. They didn't pull their hair back in a ponytail. They jumping over tables and busting glass. Who are these women? That's making us look crazy. Because of what somebody is saying. You ready to fight. Every time somebody say something, you better learn how to shake it off and keep it moving. Ain't nobody got time for all that. I am not getting ready to argue with you about that. Go argue with yourself. What did we say last week? Talk to the hand because I'm going to lift up mine. And my hands, when my hands are lifted, things got to shift. Things got to change. I'm not going to be in a, in a discourse of debate with you about stupid stuff. Just because you don't understand what God is doing in my life. Good morning, Sister Beverly. Hey, Stephanie. Just because you, listen, how do you, how do I expect you to understand what God is doing in my life? When half the time I don't understand what God is doing in my life. How do you expect people to understand what God is doing in your life when sometimes you don't even understand what God is doing? You watching other people like, what are they doing? Sometimes they don't even know what they're doing. They're like, Lord, I don't know what to do. And so you're just trying to be led. And I'm not talking about stupid decisions. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the obvious. I'm saying when you are seeking to obey God. And yet things seem to continue to latch itself to you. When you feel like you're in a season of bad luck. Which there is no such thing. I know. I know. We've said it all of our lives. But what we must understand is that whatever is going on in our lives, either God has done it or God has allowed it. Let me let me just make that clear. God is not a God of sickness. God is not a God of disease. So he did not bring sickness to you for whatever reason he allowed it. Lord, so why has this attached itself to me? Show me. What it is you want me to get out of this. I do contend that sometimes we are asking God to release us from something quicker than we were supposed to be released from. Let's look at this with Paul. Immediately, Paul shook the snake. The snake, y'all. What is a snake? 
It was a snake. Some of you married the snake, but you chose to marry the snake. God told you, God didn't tell you to marry that snake. But since you did, you got to wait, perhaps, for God to tell you to get up out of that situation. But again, even if you married the snake, you married the abuser, you married the cheater, and you're saying, God, I want up out of this. This is craziness. First, repent. Lord, you didn't tell me to marry that person. That was me. I wanted to marry him because I thought it was better to marry than to burn. I was tired of being alone. I needed somebody to help me take care of my kids. I had a brother tell me, I ain't marrying no broke woman. <laughs> I ain't mad at him. He was like, because I'm at a season in my life, I want a woman to take care of me. Uh, yuck. I'm like, oh, cook for you? Clean your house, do the stuff that, you know, a man, be a helpmate. He was like, no, I lost everything in my first marriage. So when I get married again, she need to have more than me so she could take care of me. Not so she can contribute. Not so we can be equal partners. I talked last week at, a, at an event about being yoked. And if anyone is going to be fatter, the Bible says that, uh, you know, the, the yoke goes around the neck and it said, eat from your neck is fat. So if anybody is going to be fatter in the neck as an ox, it should be the man so that he can pull the plow. Amen. But awesome if they're even, if they're equally yoked together. And certainly the body, in this nature, in a relationship, that would be equally yoked spiritually first submit it one to another but any if one of them is going to be stronger the bible says that we are the weaker vessels as women physically weaker emotionally weaker not weaker we should not be in the brain be smart but that's what he said so you have you have situations in your life where things have attached themselves to you sickness disease um, debt, bad credit, uh, relationships, people from your past, emotions, things that happened to you as a child, and you're still attached to those things. And I am coming to you this morning, letting you know you can be released. You can shake them off. You can be set free free, you can be made whole. Even as people are watching, expecting you to stay stuck, expect, expecting you to stay latched up in that thing, expecting you to lose your mind while you waiting for God to tell you you can go. You can be released. You can be set free. You can be made whole. Many of you, early on in their marriages, I'm getting up out of here. But now, it's 10 years later, it's 15 years later, it's 20 years later, and you're like, Lord, I'm so glad I stayed. Because look at the man he is now. Look at the woman she is today. Oh my God, our children. Hallelujah. A season where you had to maybe disconnect yourself from your children. Because they just wasn't right. They were stealing from you. They was lying from you. They was putting you in more debt than you could bear. And it hurt to have to tell them, baby, you can't come back here. It hurt to have to do that. But now that child is, is successful and they're a viable citizen because you kept praying. You had to shake yourself from them. You had to disconnect yourself from a season. But, but you, did, you never just totally threw them out there to the wolves and look at them today. Understand that God knows everything that has come up out of, out of the fire of your life. He knows. He knows. And he wants you to be free. He knows. And he wants you to be delivered. He knows. And he wants you to shake yourself. I, I remember telling a friend. I remember asking her. Um, let me see. How do I say this Holy Spirit? I remember asking her. Um, there were things going on in her life. And physically in her body uh sickness and disease and not not so much disease but definitely sickness and infirmity and she had put on a lot of weight 
And I asked her one time, I said, do you think that maybe because of the things that happened to you as a young girl and, and coming up as a teen and in your 20s and relationships that maybe you have kept your weight on to keep men away because in your fear size 8 or your fear size 10 or your fear size 12 that that drew so much attention to you that you're still attached to the hurt and the pain and the things that happened to you and and you don't want to you don't want that body anymore and i told her that that was part of the reason why i kept my weight on for so many years because of the attention that it got me as a young woman, as a teenager. And I didn't know what to do with all of that. And so because I didn't know what to do with it, and I already had my insecurities as a young lady, I already had things that had happened to me as a young girl that imparted and attached itself in these insecurities that needed so much uh, uh, approval from a man coming up as a teenager in my early 20s and yay, even my early 30s. And so I had all of these things still attached to me and I had not learned how to shake them off, how to be delivered from them, how to have my soul disconnected from the things of my past. And so my weight up until what, seven years ago? was a thing that I allowed to keep them back. Now, crazy enough, we must understand that whatever your thing is, man or woman, whatever your thing is, young or old, whatever your thing is, black or white, Latino, whatever your thing is that you think you have built up a wall to keep someone away, it's somebody who is looking to tear that wall down because your 60 pounds, extra 100 pounds, honey, somebody like that. And so you still can be pulled in to something that you shouldn't be attached to because you're not whole yet. So ultimately, we got to get the inside right so that when they come, when the job opportunity comes, when the increase comes, when the promotion comes, when the relationship comes, you're whole. You have shaken yourself. You have disconnected yourself from the things of your past that have tried to attach themselves to you. The words of other people. The naysayers, the stuff that people have said over the years of your life that have built up walls that have told you what you cannot be and what you will never be. And you just like your mom or you just like your daddy or our family nevers or uh, we don't do that. Oh, yes, we do. You know why? Because you've been redeemed. You've been redeemed in Christ. And though... Your family may have not done that. Your bloodline may have not gone on and got advanced degrees or moved out of that city or moved off that block or moved out of that neighborhood. There's a new, there's a new sheriff in town. There's a, there's a new Lord in town and his name is Jesus and his spirit lives in you and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can be set free from your past. You can be set free from the things that your ear gates heard and received and was planted in your spirit and in your soul. You can be free from the things that your eyes saw. You can be free. You can shake it off. They gonna talk, but you gotta learn how to shake it off. You gotta learn how to keep it moving. You gotta learn how to not allow yourself to be drawn in to continuously be led astray by the words of man, of what people say you cannot be and what you will not do, while they standing back watching like they was watching Paul in Acts 28 to see what was going to happen, to see if you are going to retaliate, to see, oh, I know she going to get him. I know she going to get her. I know he going to handle his business. No, nah, I'm going to choose to do something different. I watched, as I was saying, the TV was on, and I was steadily working yesterday, reading uh, the authors for our next book, um, The Mornings After, and I was reading one of the authors' chapters. Good morning. Uh, 
Good morning, Carol, Sister Carol, and Sister... Hey, Sister Towns, that's one of our authors. Has so happened, I was reading one of the uh, chapters from our, author, our, this, the, our book, The Mornings After, From Grief to Glory, and the TV was on. And as I said, this somehow it got to the, um, the wherever the, the um, what is it, what did I say, the basketball wives. Hey, Sister Roberta. Um, I, it got to the basketball wives, and that's what it was just stayed there. And the girl who Ivana fixed my life, she was on, and I don't remember her name. She was on. And one of the girls said, well, I guess she need to go back to Ivana to fix her life because she carrying a taser. See, people going to stand back and watch after you've been delivered, after you've been set free, because they want to see. You're going to go back to your old, weak, and miserable ways. They want to see. Are you really saved? <laughs> They're going to see. How are you going to handle that situation? They're going to see. They want to see. Are you going to forgive? Are you going to let go? They want to see. Are you going to shrink back? Are you going to go back to the person you used to be? There are people who are waiting to see. They're watching. And while they watching, they run in their mouths. So give them something to see. Let them see a woman, a man of God, who knows how to forgive. Let them see a woman, a man of God, a child of God, who knows how to shake it off and let it go and walk away. Let them see a woman or a man of God who says, no, 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 I'm not going to handle it the way that I used to. I'm just going, I'm going to go, I'm going to handle this the way God would have me handle it. I'm going to end with this story. Years ago, I bought my mother um, a mother's ring and uh, a, a mother's bracelet and some other things from a local jewelry store in our city in Benton Harbor. And I went into the store. I, I, I was, I'm one, and yeah, I'm one of them people that if I'm in a store and you don't acknowledge me as a customer and you have me around waiting, I'm quick to get the manager's number, the corporate office's number, and call and report you. Like the little lady who wanted the corporate number in that um what 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 restaurant was that guys and and um I don't want to say the wrong restaurant for breakfast, and they were in the restaurant, and she asked for the corporate number because she felt she was not getting the service that she wanted, and so it resulted in them call the waffle house the calling the police, and she was dragged across the floor with her top coming down, and so uh sister Bernice King has suggested that we um, boycott the Waffle House. I ain't got no problem with that because I don't go there anyway. Um, and the Waffle House and everybody else need to, to handle this stuff differently just because you got a, a black person calmly ask for the corporate number and they want something, they want to be treated right. Instead, you call the police on them. So anyway, I'm one of those people. So she, they had me wait. I know I was waiting for at least 30, 30, 45 minutes to be waited on to pick up my mother's product. And I watched them talk. I was in college. Wilberforce had come home for Christmas. I watched them talk throughout their jewelry store, wait for everybody else to come in and wait on them. And I just stood. And my sons would tell you, honey, I was clean in college. So I probably didn't get off the highway uh, in sweats and a t-shirt with a baseball cap turned backwards. <laughs> Glory to God. I was clean in college. Yeah. So so I'm I I I probably wasn't looking too scruffy walking up in Fox Jewelers in Benton Harbor. Uh-huh. And they had me wait. And I, I'm talking to you about learning how to shake stuff off when people are talking and running their mouths and handling it a different way. Finally, the manager comes out and was says, May I help you? And I says, Well, actually, you can. I've been waiting for almost 45 minutes uh, to pick up my mother's uh, order or her Christmas present. And I need your corporate number. Oh, I'm sorry. So here, the, I'm sorry. We didn't realize you were waiting. You didn't realize I was waiting. It ain't like you in Walmart. It's a little jewelry store. Okay. And uh, I said, no. Yes, you did. You saw me waiting and you waited on other people. I need the corporate number. And I called and I said, Ann, I need all my money back off of the product, the, the three pieces of jewelry that I have had personally made for my mother with all six of our birthstones in it, all the kids and hers in the middle. 
Well, ma'am, that was a special order. You can't. Oh, yes, I can. Because you did not treat me the way I deserve to be treated as a customer. Didn't get irate. Didn't scream. Didn't holler. I walked out of there with all my money. And after Christmas, before I went back to school, bought my mother her gift that Christmas. Which means I got it for less. I encourage you today. There will be people standing around talking about your life. And there have been people standing around talking about your life. Expecting your life to go a particular way. Because you lost a job. Because you had a sickness. Because you had a disease. Because you had a relationship that ended. Because of whatever. They have stood around watching to see how you were going to handle it. And I want to encourage you today. While they talking, you shake it off. While they're talking, you keep making bank. While they're talking, you keep progressing. You keep going to the next level and experiencing the things in life that God wants you to experience. For it is he who gives you the power to gain wealth to advance his kingdom. It is he who comes into your life for you to take your life to the next level. You can do anything with God. You can do anything with God. Why you haven't made it to that next level yet? Don't worry about it. It's coming. The opportunity is going to come. You just keep your mouth clean and your heart pure. And watch God. And watch God. While they walk in the, watch in the sea, if you're going to fail, you just let them watch you walk off and take it to the next level as you go from grace to grace, glory to glory, and faith to faith. God, we thank you. We thank you for these, your sons, and these, your daughters, God. Thank you, God, that we can be encouraged today that as they're talking, we're shaking it off. As they're running their mouths, we're running to the bank. Glory to God. As they're saying what we can't do and what's going to happen, God, you're showing us a greater way, a better way, God. Hallelujah. You're showing us, God, how to keep growing in you and how to stay connected to you, God. You're showing us how to obey you even when it hurts and how to keep a guard over our mouths, oh God, when we want to say something back. God, we know that they're going to be heated situations in our lives and we know that when they're heated situations things are going to come up out of our spirit and may even come up out of our lives God and come up out of our mouths but God help us in Jesus name to know what to say when to say and how to say and if to say at all but in all things God let us pray let us pray. Let us pray for our enemies. Let us pray for those who dog us and, and talk against us and run their mouths. God, if all our prayer is, is Lord, help them, heal them, set them free. God, give them what they need so that they can stay out of my business. Good God Almighty. God, we thank you. I thank you for a plan for everyone under the sound of my voice. God, we thank you for victory. Victory in the lives of your sons and in your daughters. Father, I pray for these, your people, God, on this day. God, Tuesday. Hallelujah. May the 15th, God. Hallelujah. We bless your name this day. And we love you, Daddy. I pray that your people are blessed. And I pray that you have a blessed day. They going to keep talking, but you keep shaking it off and move forward in God. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. I think next week I am going to talk about breaking soul ties. I think that's going to be my topic next week. So join me, 5 a.m., 5 a.m., Fourth Watch Prayer. I will see you next Tuesday. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. And just remember, the Lord loves you more. God bless you.